Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and this is your stimulus check update for the next stimulus package for Tuesday, September 22nd. I hope everyone is off to a good and safe start to their Tuesday so far. In this video, I'll be discussing both the first and second stimulus check. I'll also be discussing unemployment, the chances of lawmakers passing the next relief package anytime soon, and then I'll be wrapping up this video by answering some of the comments and questions I received in my previous video. But first, if you would mind real quickly liking this video, give me a big thumbs up. It really just helps with the YouTube algorithm in terms of pushing this video out to other viewers like you and hopefully helping other people like you as well. Okay, so jumping right into it today, I'm going to quickly go over some updates on the federal unemployment insurance benefits. First, up on the screen, you'll see the list of the states that have already started paying out benefits to their residents. And while this list does include almost 50 states at this point, we still have a ways to go. Now, if you see your state up on the screen as one of the states that have already paid out the benefits and you haven't yet received your payment, it may be because you're not receiving at least $100 per week in state unemployment insurance benefits. If you're not receiving at least $100 in weekly state unemployment insurance benefits, Unfortunately, you won't be eligible for the $300 federal plus up. This, among other things, is just another reason why Congress needs to get their act together and extend these benefits on a longer term, more stable basis. Next, up on the screen, you'll see the list of the states that have been approved for the federal unemployment benefits, but haven't started paying up benefits to their residents yet. We can only hope that it won't be too much longer before everyone in these states get paid. Residents in these states need the money now, not a month from now. These states and their unemployment systems need to get it together and fast. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm just going to move right along to some updates on the next relief package and the second stimulus check. House Democrats released a rough draft of a government funding bill, which Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell instantly slammed. McConnell said that the bill shamefully leaves out key relief and support that American farmers need and that this is no time to add insult to injury and defund help for farmers and rural America. So with McConnell already disapproving the House's bill, it sounds like the chances of a government shutdown increases while the likelihood of a second stimulus check decreases. This is because the government will need to pass a CR in order to avert a government shutdown by the end of this month before they can even really get back to talks for more relief. And reaching an agreement on a new CR was something that was supposed to be worked out fairly by Pelosi and Mnuchin without involving any stimulus related talk. So we really have to hope they can get their stuff together to get this passed and then get right back to work on stimulus relief negotiations. Now, there are some reasons why we should be optimistic about the next relief package and also some reasons why we shouldn't be feeling so good about the chances of more relief. First up, the bad reasons. Right now, if a clean CR can't be reached, the government will be shut down. This may end up taking up some valuable time they could have been using instead to negotiate more on the next relief package. Secondly, there's also time constraints with the elections coming up. Much of the focus is going to be towards that, and many lawmakers are going to be campaigning for their elections instead of spending time in Washington on the next relief package. Again, that doesn't bode the best for another relief package getting passed. Finally, with the sad passing of Ruth Ginsburg, Donald Trump and Republican senators are looking to quickly find her replacement. With election day a little over one month away, Democrats argue they should wait until after the election to appoint a new Supreme Court justice. Obviously, their hopes are that if Biden can win the election, then he could be the one who gets to nominate the next justice. Or even if Democrats take control of the Senate, then at least they'll be able to block anyone Trump does pick. Of course, President Obama, in his final year of presidency in 2016, pushed senators to vote on his nominee, Merrick Garland. Mitch McConnell refused to vote, but of course, that was a different scenario entirely, being that the Senate was controlled by Republicans. Any Obama nomination Republicans didn't like was most likely going to be rejected either way. But now that the White House and the Senate are controlled by Republicans, they can basically push through anyone they want, which really works out well to their advantage. That's what's causing Democrats to be so upset and why they're calling McConnell a hypocrite for refusing to vote back in 2016 on Obama's nominee, but now all of a sudden wanting to vote with Trump's nomination. This is also why we're seeing threats from the likes of Chuck Schumer saying that nothing will be off the table if they appoint a new justice and even threatening to expand the amount of justices in the future to gain more control. This is turning into a real sticky situation. So as you can see, this whole situation over appointing a new justice isn't bringing the two sides any closer together, which is it going to make either side want to compromise 
any more on the next relief package. I don't see any way Republicans appoint a new justice in spite of Democrats playing them not to, then Pelosi being willing to drop her price tag anymore. Even though more relief for Americans definitely shouldn't be held up because of that, sadly, out of bitterness, it most likely will be. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, here are some reasons why we should be optimistic about another relief package passing. First up, the stock market is beginning to tank. Now, some people may say this is normal, that it's a September sell-off or whatever else. Regardless, this is definitely going to catch President Trump's attention. If nothing else in the world will catch the president's attention, a slipping stock market will. The economy and the stock market are two things that Trump really needs to have going for him in order to win re-election, and if it continues to slip just weeks before election day, that may not bode the best for him. And if it continues to do so, it may make Republicans more willing to raise their price tag up to the $2.2 trillion Pelosi is requesting just to reach a deal. Reaching another relief package will for sure help the stocks rebound and continue to grow, at least in the short term. We should also be optimistic about another relief package because of what's going on with some of the hospitality industries. Airlines are requesting more relief as they see more layoffs looming in the future. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has even supported relief for airlines and the restaurant industries as well. However, would she also hold up relief for them as well if she didn't get the aid for state and local government? It is quite possible she could give aid for the airlines and restaurants in a smaller package, which includes stimulus checks, among other things. That's the hope, anyways. And it does give us a little bit reason for optimism. And finally, we should also be optimistic because, well, the two sides are still very much on the same page on a lot of issues. There are really only two things they're not able to agree with. Those things being aid for state and local government, and how much federal unemployment relief people should receive. If they can finally come to bipartisan agreements on those two issues, just two things, then we may have a deal. They aren't far off at all, and it really shouldn't be this hard. A bill like what the Problem Solvers Caucus proposed worked as a great middle point, but unfortunately, it never really gained too much support from Nancy Pelosi. However, being that the two sides still really aren't that far off, the likelihood of a deal really isn't that low. The only problems we're facing right now are the time to get something passed with everything else going on and the resentment going on between the two sides. If Republicans and Democrats can simply put their differences aside and they really want to get something done, then they can easily do so. Over the next month, we're really going to find out a lot about our lawmakers. How badly do they want more relief for the American people? Because when there's a will, there's a way. There's really no excuse for them not to get something done, but thankfully for us, that's why we get to vote. In the meantime, we just have to continue preparing for the worst, but hoping for the best. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm just going to give a quick update on the first round of stimulus payments. At this point, if you filled out a tax return in the last two years, then you should have already received your first check by now. If you haven't, I would recommend that you check the payment portal for your current payment status. If you haven't filled out a tax return within the last two years, or you're on social security benefits, then I would recommend that you fill out the non-filers tool by October 15th in order to receive your payment. With that said, let me know in the comment section below if you received your first stimulus check or if you're still currently waiting for it. If you are still waiting for your first check, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am truly sorry. It should not be taking this long for the IRS to get everyone their stimulus payment. Now, if you received your $1,200 stimulus check, but you never received the $500 for each dependent you have under the age of 17, then you'll have until September 30th to claim your dependents using the non-filers tool. Otherwise, unfortunately, you'll have to wait all the way until next year to claim a $500 credit on your tax returns. I really don't want to see anyone wait any longer than what they have to. And finally, if you want to speak to a live human about your first stimulus payment, you can still most definitely call the IRS at 1-800-919-9835. And the only recommendation that I would have for you is to call just a little bit earlier in the day just to avoid those longer hold times. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm just going to answer some of the comments and questions that I received in my previous video. And if you have any other comments or questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. 
I do try to answer as many of the comments and questions as I possibly can, but for those comments and questions I'm not able to respond to, I do try to answer some of the more popular ones to answer in the next video in video form. Okay, so without further ado, well, let me go ahead and jump into the first comment of today's video, which is from Nikki. Nikki says, Josh, do those people on SSI have to fill out the non-fathers tool to receive their payment? Thank you so much for your question, Nikki. And if you're on SSI, then you should only have to fill out the non-fathers tool if you started receiving your benefits this year. Otherwise, no action is required on your part and you should receive your stimulus payment automatically. However, if you started receiving SSI benefits before this year and you weren't claimed as a dependent and you still haven't received your check, then I would recommend that you go ahead and fill out the non-fatherless tool just in case. The IRS should have sent you your check by now if all those cases are true, so I'd make sure to fill out the non-fatherless tool just in case they don't have all your information for whatever reason. Okay, moving right along to the next question of today's video, which is from Michelle. Michelle says, do you think our hero workers and essential workers will get anything? Thank you so much for your question, Michelle. And unfortunately, I don't think they will. In the HEROES Act, the House passed back in May, there was $200 billion allocated towards essential workers. However, as we all know, that bill never ended up passing the Senate. Hazard pay for essential workers is still something being widely talked about, but being that the next bill is more than likely going to only be around one to one and a half trillion dollars, there probably won't be enough room in it for hazard pay. This is extremely unfortunate because essential workers have been the backbone of our economy and kept us going through this hard time. So even though I do believe that essential workers definitely do deserve something extra, more than likely they probably won't. With that said, I will most definitely keep you updated if anything does happen to change. All right, so on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you did enjoy the content in this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It is completely free to do so and it's a great support to me. Also, if you'd like to receive one free stock from Webull valued all the way up to $1,600, please feel free to claim that free stock by clicking the link in the description box below. And until next time, I'll see you guys and I hope you have a great day today.